There's a message from the outback, a murmur on the breeze, from restless dreams awaken me this morning. My whole family were into music. Like it was back in the days before television, and uh, there was so much of our social life was around the piano. No one that I know in our family could play piano well, but there was always someone who could bash something out. And my dad played banjo in the local band. And my uncle played fiddle. And, uh, you know, and they're all wheat farmers, never got paid. I love John. He's always been a good country boy. And uh, I've spent enough time in the country doing what he does to appreciate how hard it is to work on the land. This is a strange calling. This is Australia calling. Quambatook's the name of the town. So they thought, they thought it'd be nice if I learned to play piano, so they got this old dragon, uh, old uh, lady from Kerrang to come and teach me to play piano. And I hated it, because uh, the kids are out playing football, I'm trying to learn to play piano. And I left my piano music on the piano in the little weatherboard town hall where I had my lessons one night, you know, on purpose. And uh, that night, the hall got burnt down. I didn't light it, but everyone's saying, oh, our town hall's got burnt down. Oh. And I'm saying, you bloody beauty. You know? <laughs> well, I ripped and dug out burrows on a sandy below hill. Eradicating rabbits doesn't take a lot of skill, but a boy born in the Mallee... They moved from the uh, Mallee area up to a place called Cropper Creek, which is out of Moree. I called in a Tamworth to the radio station at 2TM and John Minson was there. Well, he made a huge fuss of me. I remember he confided to me that he was going to, to cease being a farmer and become a country entertainer. I don't mind at all if you call me a Mally boy. We've been just on the same wavelength all the way and uh, at one stage he was coming through and... Took me out and showed me Thunderbolt's Cave, you know, the, the, uh, one of our famous bush rangers. We had a wonderful day together with uh, my son Laurie and, and James and uh, John. And this is back in 1970. While we were investigating the cave, Laurie and my son and James went up and dropped crackers down through the top and blew the heck out of us. And I've always realised since then that uh, John Minson, who started um, the Tamworth Awards, of course, inspired by what's happened in Nashville, um, he, uh, he's been always such a, a great uh, encouragement to young artists, and uh, uh, he is a legend. Galleries of pink alas, crystal nights with diamond stars. I can remember the first gig that I went to, I sat in the front row with a pencil and a pad, and I wrote out my comments. I think the greatest thing about Phil Matthews is he, he is on about bringing the best out in people. And of course I didn't realise what I was doing to him. Poor bloke up there on the stage. Breaks your heart when rain won't come It breaks your heart Because he'd look down and here's Phil madly writing, you know. He manages to, to stay a layman as far as listening to music, so I call him Big Ears. Um, you know, someone said calls big ears and naughty at one stage. Looking back, it was just quite hysterical, really. But he handled it, and and we've gone from there, really. And he's not afraid afraid to tell me, you know, what's working and what's not, and uh, and I listen. He will now. <laughs> it took a while. In the backyard with the barbecue and the tinny in his hand, he's like anybody else, mate. An extraordinary bloke, uh, though. When it comes down to writing songs and and telling stories in songs about. Us as Australians, he's the bloke. Lawsy was really made old man Emil, the first record I ever made. Uh, he made it a hit in Sydney. He came in with this record and said, Good day, mate. <laughs> I think you should have a listen to this. So I had listened to it and uh, obviously loved it because it was, it was so infectious. Lawsy played the hell out of it. Let me tell you of an interview with an old man emu. He's got a beacon, feathers and things, but the poor old fella ain't got no wings. 
Aren't you jealous of the witch tiled eagle? I'm a little la da da While the eagle's flying round and round Keeping two feet firmly on the ground Now I can't fly but I'm telling you I can run the pants of a kangaroo but I don't Everybody do. else was singing with American accents, me included You know, Laws has been a jackaroo, he's been all that <clears throat> So I guess he related to a bush boy coming to town so all of a sudden you had a fella singing songs sounding like this. I had to cross the barrier of, of saying things like I love you in an Aussie accent uh, singing and, and singing love songs as an Aussie. It sort of wasn't really done. He wasn't about to change for anybody. Well, me and them's like cheese and chalk. I arrived in Sydney with... Uh, a car with a, I think, a, a, a dent in every panel, you know, and I was just come from the bush, and uh, he was very uh, good to me, and apparently everyone said, gee, mate, you're getting on well with Lawsy, you know, like, it's pretty hard to get on well with Lawsy. I just think he had a great passion for what he did. A city girl is happy with her friends and family life Appreciates her wine with him at night she tries to find the sparkle, she searches but it's gone. With lots of love she hopes he'll be all right. Her man has gone all quiet, he's not a... John was passionate about so many things, passionate about his music, uh, passionate about his uh, ultimate success passionate about Australia and passionate about fairness. And I think it was that, probably the fairness thing that intrigued me most, because it's so typically Australian. Now a bushman can't survive on city lights. When the Emu and I get together socially, it's, um, uh, it's not always a pretty sight. <laughs> the thing with laws, you just don't mention the word uh, wild turkey. You just don't don't say it around him because next thing you'll have one in front of you. It looks like a glass of coke, but don't be fooled. So maybe it's best we don't talk about that. One time I tried drinking water out of a beer bottle just to sit and make it look like I was keeping up, but he woke up and I was in real trouble. The big glass of coke was in front of me. I love him like a brother. I call him my little brother, and uh, uh, I think of him as such with pride. I've got four mongrel little brothers, now I've got a mongrel big brother, and now he, he's never had a little brother, now he's got a mongrel little brother. The John Law's Morning Show heard right round Australia. Queensland people, my friend the emu, John Williamson, is on his way to Queensland for a well-earned break, perhaps to catch a little of that tropical fever. I wish. I love rhythms, you see. I'm into rhythm more than anything. All goes back to me playing banjo, and the dances when I was a kid, you know. It hits me when I see the sign of Byron Bay. Mango, sugar cane, I can't explain. So if I sing a song about tropical things, I think reggae and calypso fits it better. So up came the song about how wonderful it feels when you're heading up into the tropics, and I call it tropical fever. And I couldn't really do it like the traditional Australian ballad style. It seemed to want, want to, to be reggae. So here we went, Tropical Fever. All the cultural delights, the neon nights. It's about making people happy and being being a good performer. If, if I've got to say what I am in one, one word, it's entertainer. He's a wonderful singer and a songwriter, but he has that other side to him, uh, and that is the entertainer. I arrived in the UK. Yeah, okay, I know it's a FJ. I don't really like the word fans. I I rather call them supporters, and I don't have a fan club. I, I call it the Fair Income Club. He does mean such a lot to the average Australian. Uh, he is one of them. What you see is what you get. And she said, Do you want a book? You want to move with the boo-boo You want to groove with the boo-boo He manages to come across to Mr and Mrs Average Australia and he's done a tremendous amount to reveal Australians to themselves. 
fans or supporters in Australia are just like old friends. I can walk around any town in, the, in Australia and people will just walk up to me like they saw me yesterday or I'm the next door neighbour and say, G'day mate, how are you going in town? You got a show in town, have you? You know, no fuss. Don't go looking through that old camphor box, woman. You know those old things only make you cry. When you dream upon that little bunny ride Makes you think that life has passed you by The most requested song that I've written is Kudam Under Wattle. And it's, it's my favourite too because it's, uh, there's a lot of pathos in it. Uh, it's, it's like it's about my wife, it's about my mother, it's about my love of the land, the, the bush. Um, and it's a, it celebrates Australia in a lot of ways. I love his romantic songs, uh, uh, like uh, Kudam Under a Wattle, and I think he does those beautifully. And, and, and people appreciate them. I think he says in his songs the things that a lot of people feel, but they are not able to articulate. He does it for them. It does make people, people cry, but I think that's a good thing, you know. I think laughing and crying are very similar. They release tension, you know. Come out here and sit down in the sun Can't you hear the magpies in the distance? Don't you feel the new day has begun? Can't you hear the bees making honey? I really don't think John uh, will be properly appreciated in, in the scheme of things as Australia is growing and finding its own identity until many years time and people will look back and say what a wonderfully pioneering artist this poet was. Hey, it's July and the winter sun is shining and the Kudamandra wattle is my friend for all at once my childhood never left me Wattle blossoms bring it back again. We're actually in, in an oasis right in the middle of Australia called Alice Springs. It's uh, probably one of the most wonderful towns in the world. It's right in the centre of Australia. You do get all sorts of Australians coming to the middle and I don't think anyone cares where, which part of Australia or which part of the world you come from. There is a beautiful melting pot here in Alice Springs. And of course the most important thing about Alice Springs is where it is. It's in uh, the McDonald Ranges and I would say arguably some of the prettiest, most beautiful, majestic scenery in the world. You know, we've got all these chasms and all these wonderful natural assets and, um, and of course there's a, a huge amount of uh, Indigenous people in this area as well. And my friend Warren, who uh, they actually own their land back there, the Aranda mob, this is the centre of the Aranda tribe. Huge area, it's probably the biggest area for any tribe in the world. It's Warren's fault. Uh, he, rang, um, he rang me up from Alice. Yeah, from the Alice. we was getting ready to do an album and um, this fella, someone come up with an idea of doing one of his songs. The phenomenon of raining on the rock is is quite amazing. He rang back and it, was, it happened from there. The idea of doing a duo, yeah. yeah. There's an enormous affinity between those two. And before Alice, we've got to get this song happening a thousand feet. The other one I wrote at your it's place. A thousand feet. So you want to find A thousand out. feet of being through here. And what's what's that line in your language? In well, Aaron? Inga. 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 Ninga. Ning. What? Ninga. 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 How do you spell that? <laughs> Ninga. Pichigala. Pichigala, that's all right, Pichigala. So, thousand feet have been through here. Ninga. Ninga. Pichigala. Was that spelled T N? When I was on Warren's land, his grandfathers passed it down. So, like, thousands of grandfathers have passed it down. Uh, and I was standing in a place just like this, and I thought, gee, there's probably never been a human here before, ever. And I thought, how stupid am I? You know, 40,000 years of Aborigines. And I probably there's probably been a thousand feet walk through here, so I came up with this. Uh, it's not, a, and it's beautiful soft country. You know, people think of the centre of being hard, but it's beautiful and soft, especially out in the Aranda area. Yeah, it's, it's all soft. beautiful soft red sand. It's not a hard place. It's a soft and gentle land. Gonna lay my bed on a soft and gentle sand. 
hear old man time whisper in my ear a thousand feet I've been through here and your line is Inca Ninka Pichicala which is our original for a thousand feet so I think we might do that one together if he, if he approves for my next album I think that'd be great Painting on the rock it took a fair while I actually had the words I wrote the words as I was driving towards the rock, um, they came out really quickly, but it took me almost two years to get a tune that, that I thought suited it. The, the first tune sounded, uh, sounded wrong, you know. It wasn't until I tuned the string down to give it that low sound, sounded like a didgeridoo. Fast to red, to big knee, and spinner fakes to go. Just come out of the mongers where the plans were ever on. And help an amateur as painted all the seas. And a shower has changed the luster of our land And it's raining on the rock In a beautiful country And I'm proud to travel this big land As an Aboriginal If there was one song that I've written that, it, that is dedicated to Aboriginals, this is it, because it's dedicated to Albert Namajira. And then I found out Warren was Albert's great nephew, and what a bonus. I'm wishing and I'm dreaming that you were here with me. I've changed some lines, eh? I can now say as an Aborigine instead of like an Aborigine. What was the other one? You... Um, the Rock? Um, the Rock. Wishing and I'm dreaming. Wishing on dreaming. It was wishing on a postcard, now it's I'm wishing and I'm dreaming. And there was another line that said, uh, Uluru has power. And he said, hey, hey, no, no, no. Uluru is Uluru power. Is power. Yeah. So he changed all this in the spot. Good evening to everyone on School of the Air for a very special assembly that we have. Good evening, everyone. Love kids. At the odd time, I get asked to I'd come up and perform to the kids who are isolated through the School of the Air. I've done it at Mount Isa and Alice Springs, and, uh, and it's wonderful. Any kids out there, I got a little pup, a puppy. <laughs> All right. Well, I got a song for you. Oh, piddle diddle diddle, you little piddle diddle little bum. Oh, piddle diddle diddle, you little piss piddle diddle bum. One day we got on well, then you drop this awful smell. Oh, little piss piddle poo, little piddle diddle bum. The main reason I got into writing songs for kids and performing it for kids is because when I was a little kid, there was no Australian music around. Piddle on the bed and piddle on the Christmas tree. Yeah, wag a little tail, but it won't work with me. Here we go now. Oh, piddle diddle diddle, you little piddle diddle little bum. And I'll never forgot, never forgotten, you know, how inspirational watching entertainers was to me, and that's why I became one. And everybody say, poo, oh, poo, a little bit, poo, poo, a little bit, a little bum. Can you come in, please, Annabelle? How many years have you been singing all together? Uh, well, I've been singing professionally since 1970. She's my mother, she's my auntie, she's many that I've known. The backbone of the bush where country kids have grown she's raised and she's nurtured those children of her own while her man does his battles on the land 
Well, I was doing a TV show called um, Bush Telegraph, and, uh, and she's a character that's been interviewed a huge amount of times because she lives 12 miles into the Simpson Desert. You can't really get much more isolated than that. And she's a bit of a hard case, but underneath a lovely old person, you know. And um, well, my wife was with me too. We, she came out, and they struck it off pretty well. I think she'd had enough of TV people. She's like, she says, I think you're a lovely person, she said, but I'm not too sure about your husband. If Mother Nature gives you a kit, you don't sort of buckle up under it. You say, right, eh? I'll get into it. And so you get back at it and you find out that, well, you come out on top. It took me a while to get through, but she uh, apparently she likes me now. I sing a song called um, Woman on the Land. You our hero, the woman on the land. It gets so hot out there, apparently, because her little house is made of just galvanised iron, so she said it gets so hot in the summer, she just sits in the bath. And here she is in her 70s, you know. I've spent more time on the Pipe Dream album researching than I ever have before. It's very hard to meet people when you're actually touring. So I actually took the time to go, for instance, uh, I went to Grawan, which is a, a little opal mining town inland from Lightning Ridge, which is northwest New South Wales. And it's like the last frontier there. Um, you're not allowed to put a permanent house on your claim. You can have a shed over your caravan or build a little humpy. Well, there's a lot of old fellows out there that find this perfect because they're, they're all retired. It's like a retirement village instead of an open mining town. They're old fellows who you could never imagine being in an ice cream big brick building, you know, a retirement village. I'm not a city person, never was. Tried living in the rocks area, but didn't fit. They all said, you've got to go and meet old Veggie Bill. Because if you're looking for songs, mate, he's been all around the place, so. Uh, and they said, you'll find him down at the local pub. They call it the local pub, the Glengarry Hilton, which could easily be mistaken for a, a chook yard that sells cans. So I found old Veggie Bill down at the, the Glengarry Hilton. No blushing now, Veggie. <laughs> if you've ever been to the Kimberley, just like old Veggie Bill, you'll pine and whine to get back there. But he reckons he never will. Because he's got too long in the tooth. And he's taken a turn or two. So his missus bought him a picture book. So that'll just have to do. He'll, He'll shout around, around the Glen Gary to Nifty and his wife. And he'll start all over again, reminiscing his Kimberley life. I found Veggie Bill five o'clock every evening at the Glengarry Hilton and uh, every can of beer I bought him, I got another story. And he always, he, he talks like this on Veggie Bill. And uh, he's got this old blue singlet on. Every day he seemed to have the same blue singlet on. He might have three or four of them, but if he did, they all stunk and they all had holes in the same place. And, uh, and he, in fact, the holes are all over his big pot belly. And he said, everybody reckons I'm a welder. <laughs> That's his big joke. I'm sure that's why he wears the shirt with the holes. Here's where you can join in. Here we go. Trevor, is it me and you? He's part of the mob. I mean, he is, he is them. He is representative uh, of them and their thoughts. A true blue person is someone who's fair dinkum and fair dinkum in Australia covers things like your word is your bond, you're a good person, you're a, you're a good mate, you help help your neighbours out, all those things that that uh, fair dinkum means, true blue means as well. He's a very wise man. The spirit of the land is running through my, my entire songwriting and I, because I really believe that the, the one thing that will bring all Australians together in a really positive way is the love of the original land itself. If they sell us up like sponge cake. This is the thing that can bring us all together whether we're Aboriginal, whether we're old generation or new generation. 
Australians or newcomers to Australia. This is the one thing that will bond us together. And it gets back to the flag, the red ochre, I think, is the colour that represents that feeling. The big rock out in the middle and the kangaroo. Hey.